All right, guys, so after being stationary for nearly five months, it is time to turn the travel channel back up to 11. These go to 11. Before we do that, you know, we got to take care of some of those pesky maintenance and safety items. So um, that's what we're doing today because that includes uh, weighing your rig. Uh, after you've been stationary for this long, you know, you take on a lot of stuff that maybe you don't really need anymore or never needed in the first place, right? So that's what we're doing this morning. We're going to head over to the scales. We're going to grab the last bit of data um, for the weighing process. And then we'll have everything we need, and we're going to um, walk through that process of making sure that you can weigh yourself accurately. So let's get on the road. Right, so I've actually already weighed my truck and my RV. Um, I did that a couple of days ago. We packed everything up. We went to the scales and I uh, weighed everything together. So I weighed the truck and the RV together. And then I just weighed the truck um, to get all those numbers that I need. Um, but, you know, in the past, I've always just kind of trusted the door jam sticker, taking it at kind of its face value. Uh, for what my payload capacity is. Uh, but for my peace of mind, I just wanted to verify that. Basically, I'm gonna verify that payload uh, by doing a couple of things. So first, I have to go weigh my truck uh, just as it was when it came off the factory line. So I've never added anything to this truck, um, but what curb weight is, is it's that weight of your vehicle or the weight of the tow vehicle when it comes off of the factory line with nothing extra added. If it has running boards coming off of the factory line, then that's part of the curb weight. Um, if running boards are added by either the dealership or you know you as an aftermarket item, it's no longer considered the curb weight. Now it's considered part of your payload because it's something that you've added to your truck um, after they determined what your payload capacity is. So again, that's just what I'm doing this morning. I've taken everything out of the truck and I'm gonna get this curb weight um, again, just so I can feel a little bit better about all of my calculations. All right, guys, so here we are. As you can see, this is really open. This is not something that you should feel intimidated by, by any stretch of the imagination. I've never seen um, the scales uh, in, a, in a situation where it's hard to get in and out of. Um, so this should not be something that uh, prohibits you or something that you feel nervous about doing uh, weighing your rig because as you can see this is pretty wide open right here. All right so you know we got to be a little bit realistic about weighing our entire setup. Granted the best way to get accurate the most accurate measurements or the most accurate weights on your entire setup would be to uh, to do a four corner way where basically you're you're weighing each individual tire or wheel to get the most accurate reading. Uh, the problem with that is those are hard to come by. Uh, I've been doing some research on those. Um, I'll put some links down below on how you can get that done, uh, but it's it's really hard to come by. They don't do it just anywhere and you got to be in the right place at the right time basically. So the next best option is to come to something like the cat scales, uh, which is where I'm at today. And I think for most people, I think this is going to be a good enough approach to you know weighing your rig to make sure that you're not overloading your truck or your RV so again this is just a more realistic way to do this um, eventually I would like to get the four corner way done uh, but I'm just you know I haven't been in the right place at the right time all right so once I get this curb weight um, then I'm gonna head back and we're gonna plug some numbers into the calculator uh, that I created for this and we're gonna see what all of our weights really are to see what kind of weight we need to shed, if any. I suspect uh, that we kinda do need to shed some weight. We've been here for five months and I'm sure we have accumulated some stuff that we certainly don't need anymore. 
Okay, so I'm gonna record this whole process because what I wanna do is just show how easy this really is, right? And so again, I'm at the CAT scales um, and CAT actually has an app that you can download that makes this super, super easy. Basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna roll up on these scales here. I've got the CAT uh, app on my phone, which I'm gonna open up here. Um, it's going to ask me basically for the uh, the station number or the station ID. I'm going to put that in the app here and then I'm going to sit here for a couple of seconds. It's going to weigh me and then boom, I'm going to drive off and I've got all the information I need. Now, keep in mind, if you're going to do this to weigh both your, your truck and your RV and you got to get those numbers, this is really a, a two-step process. So. If you're weighing both and you want to get those numbers as accurate as possible, the first thing you're going to do is drive onto these scales uh, with your truck and your RV connected. And then it's going to basically weigh everything all together. Then what you would have to do is go disconnect your RV. And the good thing about having these, you know, going to these cat scales is they're normally at these big truck stops where there's some place where you can actually just go disconnect from your RV for a few minutes and then come back through the scales on your truck to get just the truck by itself, right? So then you've got your entire setup together with your truck and your RV. You've got the weight of just your truck and now you have everything you need to do the calculations to make sure that you're within all of your weight limits. All right, so I've got my CAT scale app open and I'm just gonna drive up here. And again, I'm just gonna show this whole process uh, to show exactly how easy this is. I don't have my camera trained on it right now, but basically there's a sign over here on my left that gives the station ID or the station location, which is 929 in my case. So I'm just going to enter that right into my app here for the station uh, location and I'm going to hit confirm. Basically, I, this is some pre-filled out data that I've, that I've already done uh, when I set the app up, but it's just basic information about me and my setup. I'm going to hit the next button. It's going to tell me what the fee is. Uh, the first fee, the first way is always $13. Um, if you're going to do the whole setup where you're going to have to come back around and weigh a second time, the reway is only uh, $3 and you have 24 hours to do that reway. So I'm going to hit accept here. It's going to charge me $13. Um, it's associated with my credit card account, so it's just going to you know, uh, charge me that automatically, right? So it's already started weighing my truck and I should have the data here in just a matter of seconds. All right, it's processing it. Okay, so now I have my weight here. Um, it gives me everything I need to know. It's got my steer axle, drive axle, and my gross uh, weight here. So that's it, I'm done. All I gotta do is drive off. So again, if you were doing everything, um, you have your RV attached, right? then what you're going to want to do is just pull through here you know back up in one of these spots unhook your rig and then go back through with your truck get your second weight which again is only three bucks um oh, oh man. and then you're on your way so now we're just going to head back uh, to the rv we're going to head back home and we're going to plug all these numbers into the calculator and see what we come up with i'm sure we're going to have to probably shed several hundred pounds um, just because we've been here so long and we've kind of lost track of you know what we have brought on and what we've gotten rid of so uh, we will see you back at the RV all right guys so here we are back at the RV and um, here's what we're gonna do next so first I'm just gonna review uh, so you know kind of what I've done up to this point as far as weighing my own rig and the different weights that I got and then I want to dive into this calculator a little bit um, that I've created and that I'm gonna share with with you and kind of go over some key terms and definitions so that everybody understands what each of these terms mean because if you're not used to them some of them can be kind of confusing so I just want to go over that to make sure everybody's got a good baseline there and then I'm just going to take my scenario of what I've done in the past few days and then apply that to the calculator I'm not going to go through the whole thing of filling in all my numbers and everything you don't need to see that but I am just going to go into you know which sections you need to use with uh, which set of weights that you got from the scales so having said that um, again a 
little bit of review on what I've done. So I've been to the weight scales a couple of different times. So the first time I went, I weighed everything. Uh, I took my truck and my RV on the trailer all connected together, just like I would be if I was rolling down the road, you know, traveling to my next campground. And then I pulled off the scales with my truck and my trailer and then parked the RV in an empty spot at the truck stop. Then I unhooked my RV and then rolled back up onto the scales with my truck again, just as it would be when I'm rolling down the road, traveling to my next campground. I got that weight and then I went and hooked back up to my RV and went back home. And then I had to come back a different day because I wanted to make sure that I had confidence in my door jam sticker about what my payload capacity is. So I came back uh, another time with just my truck as it rolled off the manufacturing line because again I haven't added anything significant to my truck that was going to add weight to that curb weight. So those are the things that I've done and now it's time to take a look at the calculator to see kind of where all of that data goes but first I want to go over those key terms and definitions. So all of that stuff is actually in the weight calculator. So I've put a legend in up here at the top. So the first couple of definitions here in the legend is going to be our gross axle weights. Now I have these in here um, just referring basically to the truck or the tow vehicle, whatever that tow vehicle is. You can see here the gross axle weight uh, rating front and gross axle weight rating rear. Um, so I've just kind of put those in there for, for the truck, uh, but realize that your RV also has a gross axle weight rating. And then we'll see that down here in the calculator here in just a minute. Um, but for the definitions, I just, uh, just kind of included it for the truck. The next definition here is going to be the gross vehicle weight rating. Um, the gross vehicle weight rating applies to both your tow vehicle and your RV. Both of them individually are going to have a gross vehicle weight rating. So for example, my my gross vehicle weight rating for my truck is 14,000 pounds and for my RV it's 16,000 pounds. So I should never exceed any one, either one of those weights on either one of those vehicles. And then we have the gross combined vehicle weight rating. Gross combined vehicle weight rating is a rating that really applies to your tow vehicle and it basically says listen when you have your tow vehicle connected up to a trailer no matter what that trailer is it could be just a you know a utility construction trailer or it could be an RV but when you hook them both up together, you should never exceed X number of pounds. That is the gross combined vehicle weight rating because you've combined the tow vehicle and the trailer. Next is going to be tow capacity. So tow capacity is a little weird and I don't really know what I think about how the manufacturers you know talk about this. Manufacturers often list and brag about their super high tow capacity. So for example my truck is rated for 31,100 pounds. That is the maximum amount of weight that my 2021 3500 Chevy Dually can tow. Now let's think about that for a second. My RV only weighs 16,000 pounds. So realistically, I am never going to hit that 31,100 pounds. Never going to even come close. Now, if you're in construction, of course the concrete's late. And you're hauling around some of these big earth moving, you know, pieces of equipment, you know, maybe you might come close to that. I have no idea how much those weigh. But for most people out there, I would say the vast majority of the people out there who are driving around the same kind of truck that I'm driving around, never, ever, ever going to reach that tow capacity rating put out by the manufacturer. That number really, to me, is just kind of a, a bragging rights kind of a number. And it's not applicable to most of us. Um, again, I'm never going to hit that. And to go along with that, you know, I think there's a lot of people out there who look at that number when they buy their tow vehicle and they say, oh, well, I can tow, you know, 28,000 pounds or 31,000 pounds, or I think they're up in the, even into the 40,000 pounds now. But there are other aspects that we need to look at. There are other weight ratings that we need to look at that we're going to come to far before we get to that maximum tow capacity. Things like your payload capacity, which we have kind of touched on and uh, we're going to look at here again in just a minute. Um, and then also there's things like your hitch weight and your pin weight. Again, I'm going to go into that here in just a second. That's the next definition. But those are the types of ratings that most of us are going to come to first before we hit that maximum towing capacity. All right, so next term here is going to be the hitch or the pin weight. And the reason I've got both on there, hitch slash pin weight, is because uh, normally travel trailers, when we talk about travel trailers, we're going to talk about the hitch weight. Uh, when we talk about fifth wheels, we're going to talk about pin weight. So the hitch weight, again, is normally going to refer to travel trailers. Pin weight usually refers 
to fifth wheels. But in both cases, what it means is basically the amount of weight that the trailer is putting into the bed of the truck or onto the tow vehicle in general. It's the amount of downward force that comes from that trailer onto the tow vehicle. A note on the, uh, the hitch weight slash pin weights. So for travel trailers, normally you want to see about 10 to 15 percent of your total trailer weight as your hitch weight. Meaning if your trailer, we're just going to go a ease of math here. If we're going to go with a 10,000 pound trailer, we want to see 10 to 15 percent of that weight being transferred to the vehicle. So that's going to be about a thousand to 1500 pounds that you want to see on your hitch weight. And that's very important because we want a, a certain amount of weight to be up front or loaded up front in the trailer so that we don't have too much weight in the rear of the trailer which can cause some significant swaying as you're driving down the road and that can be really dangerous then for a fifth wheel we want to see somewhere between about 15 to 25 percent of the trailer weight being transferred into the tow vehicle or the truck again we want to prevent too much weight being in the back of the rig to prevent that swaying that excess swaying as you head down the highway okay then the last term that i want to talk about here it's really two terms and they kind of go together and we've already touched on them a little bit is the curb weight and the payload capacity so again the curb weight is the weight of your vehicle when it came off the manufacturing line right anything added to that vehicle after it left the manufacturing line is no longer included in the curb weight it's part of the payload capacity now payload capacity is often another weight limit that a lot of people forget about and we don't want to do that so let's say you have a 14,000 pound gross vehicle weight rating and you have a 10,000 pound curb weight well that means you have 4,000 pounds that you can put inside of that vehicle before you overload it that 4,000 pounds is your payload capacity. So again, it's the gross vehicle weight rating minus the curb weight, that equals your payload capacity. Okay, so let's talk about what I need to do with my numbers um, that I got from the scales, right? So if we go look here at our weight calculator, it's pretty easy to use. I got some instructions in here. It's pretty easy to follow, very self-explanatory. So basically all you're gonna have to do is fill out everything highlighted in yellow here. These are all numbers that you need to fill in to the weight calculator to make sure that you're not overloading either your truck or your RV. Now, over here in the weight ratings columns, right, these are numbers that you need to get from the vehicle manufacturer, right? So the gross axle weight ratings, uh, the gross vehicle weight ratings, you should be able to find all of that data about your truck either online or the stickers that are in the door jams of your vehicles. Uh, most of this data is there. It's going to tell you, hey, the maximum weight you should ever put in this truck uh, should not exceed X number of pounds all right so you do that for not only your tow vehicle but also you do that for your rv now for your rv that information should be on a sticker on the driver's side all the way up forward um, that's where i've seen i think every specification sticker for every rv that i've ever looked at has been up there i'm not seeing them all out there i'm not seeing every rv but that's where they've been every time i've looked for them all right so you fill in those numbers for all of your weight ratings and then you come back and what you're going to do is now fill in these numbers here that you got from the scales so the first one here is the first way which is your tow vehicle and your trailer and again you're just going to go get those weights from your cat scales app or whatever documentation uh, was provided to you from the scales you'll just take that information and you're going to put that in you put your steer steer axle in drive axle and your trailer axle and what that's going to give you is a gross combined vehicle weight so it's going to say your tow vehicle and your trailer combined together are x number of pounds so then you're going to drive off just like we talked about before you'll drive off the scales you're going to drop your trailer some somewhere come back then you're going to enter just the data for your tow vehicle and again you're just going to put in the steer axle and the drive axle and that will be your gross weight for your tow vehicle and then what's going to happen over here is this is going to uh, populate all of the numbers in these over under calculations so it's going to tell you for your gross axle weight ratings it's going to transfer over this uh, this number will be populated everything in here will be populated from those yellow highlighted cells so it's going to give you uh, a weight rating here it's going to just transfer that over right then the actual weight is going to be transferred over just so you can see them by side by side and then it's going to tell you 
how much over or under your weight limit you are. Okay, then it's gonna do the same thing for the gross vehicle weight rating, right? And this right here is for the tow vehicle. And then it will give you the gross combined vehicle weight rating. Again, everything all together. And then it will do your actual tow capacity for you as well. Again, probably not a number that most of you are gonna come up against, but you know, it's just good to see. And then down here, also, this will also be populated from all the uh, data that you put in, but this is the trailer data that you need, your gross vehicle weight, and your gross axle weights. And then it's gonna calculate your pin weight. For those of you who have a fifth wheel, it's gonna calculate that pin weight for you. I just wanna point out down here, as you can see, uh, I've, I've got another tab for the travel trailer. Most everything on here is the same, except for we're gonna be looking at the tongue weight or the hitch weight instead of the, the pin weight for the fifth wheel. So back to the pin weight, um, it's gonna calculate that for you. It's gonna give you uh, an actual pin weight for your setup and again you want to make sure that that pin weight is between 15 to 25 percent of your trailer weight for a fifth wheel and again for travel trailers that's going to be 10 to 15 percent and then the last thing it's going to calculate here is the payload so getting back to if you have a uh, vehicle with a payload capacity of 4,000 pounds right this calculator is going to fill out this little block right here and it's going to give you whatever your actual payload is and it will tell you if you're over or under that payload limit all right so again the purpose here of this whole video number one was to really just show how easy these cat scales are to use cat scales are kind of all over the place a lot of truck stops have them again if you don't have access to the cat scales then you know you can you can usually find like a granary or something like that that has scales and they'll usually charge you you know five or ten bucks to go in there and weigh yourselves and they'll give you all of the same data but the purpose of this was to just show how easy this is because I think it's very important that everybody out there that are hauling these big RVs down the road know exactly what they're hauling down the road and you can arm yourself with that information to make sure that you have the tow vehicle to match whatever it is that you're hauling because I think there are a lot of people out there who are hauling uh, RVs that are way too big for their tow vehicles. So again, it was a very simple process. There's really nothing to be intimidated by. And then the last thing I wanted to show you was the weight calculator and go over some of those key terms and definitions so that you have a better understanding of what those mean and how they apply to your RV and your tow vehicle. So I think that's gonna do it for today, guys. Please make sure if you like this video, if you got something out of it, make sure you hit that like button. And even more importantly, make sure you hit that that subscribe button we are slowly but surely growing the channel and we just want to make sure that you guys are enjoying the content so hitting that like button hitting that subscribe button that'll let us know that you are getting something out of our content and don't be afraid to you know leave us comments in the comments section uh, videos that you might want to see in the future um, any additional information that you might have wanted to see in the video that you just watched whatever it is you know let us know what you think about these videos in the comments section and we will be happy to respond to you uh, we are open to any ideas that you guys have out there for future videos so just let us know again that's it for the day and we will see you next time